First Presbyterian Church in Jackson, Tennessee, and this is our daily devotional series. Today we're going to talk about one of Jesus' parables, it's the parable of the widow and the unjust judge. This is found in Luke chapter 18, uh, starting in verse 1. So listen now for the word of God. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God nor respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Luke does some of the work here for us. Uh, he gives us an interpretation of this parable in which uh, he puts God in the role of the unjust judge as the one to grant request and then he puts us the people of God into the role of the widow so we are the ones who who cry out for mercy uh, to, to God and I've always found that interpretation a little odd um, with all due respect to Luke uh, I'm not saying it's wrong it's it's just always been a little odd to me uh, to put God in the role of someone that's unjust. We know God is all about justice and mercy, so why would we, you know, put God in this role of someone who is unjust? And then also, it seems a little odd to um, think of the widow as as us praying uh, to God because. It, the widow basically just wears this judge out <laughs> with you know her request to him um and i don't think that we have to pester god you know i don't think that we have to be a nuisance to god for god to hear us i, I think it's much more loving than that so um i mean i think that that luke is just trying to tell us that we need to to pray continually but um but you know you can kind of go down this rabbit hole and it, it just it it's an odd interpretation. Um, but you know, the great thing about scripture is it speaks to us in new ways and in different ways every time we come to it. You know, depending on what is going on in our lives and in our world, you know, we'll hear scripture differently from one reading to the next. And especially, I think, with Jesus' parables, I mean, they're just such rich stories that we can have multiple interpretations. And it doesn't mean that one interpretation is right and one is wrong. It just means these stories are so rich and so strong that we can hear all kinds of, of truths in them. Um, you know, they can speak to us in different ways, uh, in new ways, every time we, we come to them. And I think that's what's happening for me today. When I read this story today, you know, against the backdrop of protest and turmoil and, you know, all the things that we're experiencing right now, I'm hearing this story differently than I have before. So, you know, I, I don't really see God in either character in this story. You know, I, I think that I see all of us in both of these characters. I mean, certainly we are in the, um, uh, we, we have the same experience as the widow. You know, we've all had the experience of 
crying out again and again and feeling like we are not being heard or feeling like our prayer has gone unanswered. Uh, we all have the feeling of being ignored, of being sidelined. Um, you know, so we can relate to the widow in that way. But also, I think if we're honest, we can see ourselves in the role of the unjust judge. Um, not that we're bad people, not that we're unjust, but, you know, the unjust judge is, um, he's apathetic to this widow. You know, he just doesn't care. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can all think of a time that we have been apathetic. We can all think of a time that we have heard someone cry out and we've turned our back or turned a blind eye. We can think about times when we've ignored, um, you know, the, the cries of someone else or the pleas for someone from someone else. We can all think about a time that, um, that, that we have not acted for justice. Um, and also like the unjust judge, you know, we of course respect God, unlike the judge, but our actions don't always reflect that. You know, our, our actions sometimes don't reflect our respect for God, our honor of God, our fear of God. You know, um, there, are, there is so much that God calls us to do, whether it's to uh, pray without ceasing or to um, inscribe God's word on our hearts and, um, or just, uh, you know, uh, loving mercy, doing justice, walking humbly with our God. There are times that we fall short. There are lots of times we fall short. And, you know, it, so our, um, our respect for God is not always reflected in our behavior. So if we are sometimes the widow and we are sometimes the judge, where is God in this story? And I think maybe God is just in the relationship between these two characters. I think God is maybe just in the mix of this situation. Um, so as this widow and judge are interacting, I think God is in the mix of all that and in that relationship. And because God is present in the situation, then the situation is able to be transformed. You know, because God is present um, in their lives, then the situation changes. So this unjust, unjust judge who we expect to keep acting unjustly all of a sudden acts in a just manner. And because God is in, in this relationship and in this mix, um, you know, this widow is sustained throughout, you know, her cries for justice. And because God is present in this situation, the, the whole thing that, you know, was unjust and was without mercy all of a sudden is, is changed. It's filled with hope. It's filled with mercy and justice. Um, so the whole, whole situation changes because of God's presence. And I think that's what God does for us too, that um, in our relationships in our lives, when God is present, all of a sudden the broken places in our lives and in our world can be transformed and suddenly reflect the, the kingdom of God. So right now during these protests, you know, we have communities that are crying out and have, have been crying out again and again that, you know, like the widow uh, in this story, they have been crying out for justice over and over and not being heard. And then we also have, you know, people in the role of the unjust judge who are acting in a way that is apathetic and turning a blind eye to that justice. Um, but God is also in the mix. God is also present. And, you know, I'm not saying that this whole situation is going to be 
um, transform tomorrow or, you know, in the next moment. Um, but it does give me hope that because God is in the mix, that there can be transformation, that there can be reconciliation, and there can be a, a next phase and a new time, a new life for us. So I hope all that makes sense, and I hope that you're staying healthy and happy, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks be to God.